Hallelujah. Take a moment to give God praise. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. 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 Brother Francis, could I invite you to come and just open us in a word of prayer? Yadabakoro bayeke tororo bayo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise, O oh God, because you are the true and living God. There is none like you, Father God. We give you thanks and we give you praise this morning because you, there is no one else that we could look to but you, Father God. So, Father God, we give you thanks and we give you thanks for all those who are coming to the service, Lord. Let your will be done, Father God. Oh God, take control of the service, Lord. Let everything that we do and everything that we say be give honor and give glory to you, O oh God. Almighty God, we trust in you, O oh God, because you never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for the breath that we have in our bodies this morning. Yes. Oh, we give you thanks and we give you praise, Father God. Bless everything that goes on, order, Father. The musicians, the praise, oh God. The word, let it, oh God, let it be, oh God. Like, like, oh God, let it be in our bodies when we get it. Let it strengthen us, Lord. And let us, oh God, continue to walk in your ways, Father God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for those on the way, oh God. Bring them here safely. And we thank you, Lord, Father God. We thank you and we bless you, Father God. Because, oh God, what will we do without you, Father? What will we do without you, Lord? What can we do without you? Mighty God, we praise you. We bless you. We thank you. Bless the service, oh God, Father God. In no other name but in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. And amen. 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 Could we lift a praise unto the Lord? In keeping with our, you may be seated, in keeping with our commitment to manifest the kingdom principles in our lives, I want to read from Colossians chapter 3, from verse 4. It says, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are on, upon the earth fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which we also walk some time when we lived in them. But now we also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is ne neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies and kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man had a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye, so also do ye. And above all these, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. And be thankful. Amen. We are here to be thankful. Amen. Come on, we are here to be thankful because of the grace and the mercy of God. We invite our worship team to come as we bless God in this. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Uh, let's be for your seat. Let's do one more thing. Uh, could we stand again? You'll be sitting for about 25 minutes. Amen. Could I ask some of you to face to the east? I want some of you to face to the north. Uh, most of us are facing the west. 
and I want some of you to face the, the south. Amen? But some of us face the east. We want some to face the north. Some is already facing the west and the south. Amen? Let's see. If, yes, there are people facing south. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord, we thank you that we had a uh, slowing down this timing of what is called culture in Trinidad and Tobago. While God, we appreciate the beat that is the Calypso beat, we may even uh, be glad for the soca rhythm. We recognize that what is called culture in Trinidad is steeped in the religion of another God. God of the flesh, carnival, the spirit of darkness. We pray God, like Job, that he would forgive us, Lord, for the carnality that we embrace as part of our right. We pray your forgiveness Lord, we do like Abraham and we remind you, God, that even though the stench of that revelry, oh God, will cause you to come down, that there is more than 50 in this land who has not bowed their knees to Baal. And so, God, we pray you would look upon this country with mercy and forgive us. Oh God, we pray for your children who have, for whatever reasons, walked away from you. That, Lord God, the appeal, O oh God, of Baal, will not, O oh God, empower them or entrap them. But they would recognize, even in this time of revelry, that you are sovereign Lord, and they will come back into the house of God. Father God, I personally know of people who got saved in Carnival. Oh God, let that grace touch people wherever they gather for fed. Let them walk out of that place a new person. Save, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Could somebody give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? People used to say to me, as a young man growing up, that you have East Indian blood in you. I would argue against them because up to 50 years, my mother would tell me that, uh, no. When my father was about to die, I discovered that um, my father's uh, mother, if was, she wasn't born in India, she uh, came from parents that was from India itself. That's just about four years ago. Three years, yes, ago. Um, so I like curry. I could eat curry every day. And there's one person here who reminds me, Pastor, you see them doubles? You must stay off of them doubles, but praise God, a blessing and blazing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going back to curry today. <laughs> you will get to understand as I go along. Amen. We are not leaving that topic yet. New kingdom, new walk. And our main text has been for the last couple of weeks, or at least four weeks, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Amen. Verse 17 to 20. And we want to read it. Our emphasis today would be on verse 18. That therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new. All the things are passed away. 
Behold, all things, all things, all things. It has nothing to do with what you see. It has to do with what the word says. Hallelujah. All things are become new. Not will become new. Not could become new. But are become. At the moment of inception, when Holy Ghost comes back into our spirits and that new life is sparked. Hallelujah. All things become new. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Given to the bishops the ministry of reconciliation. You see that there? Given to the pastors the ministry of reconciliation. You see that there? Anybody? Is that there? No. Given to us. A simple word, but it's inclusive of every person who has the spark of Holy Ghost in them. Are you saved? Then you are part of that us. And all things, verse 18, are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, because we have the word of reconciliation, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God. So this morning, we want to say that our job specification has been clearly defined. God in Christ reconciling us to himself. And as we have been looking at that from Bible study, marvelous light, marvelous light. Amen. In Bible study, we have been trying to help us to accept that we need to understand what God has done. We need to understand what God has done. Hallelujah. We take for granted what this marvelous light is. You know, hallelujah. Uh, a child has a certain amount of naivety, right? Bad dog and the child looking to want to go and play with it, right? You know that is danger. You're balling behind the child. But the child doesn't recognize the danger. Because the child, what? Doesn't understand there is danger. Hallelujah. So we need to understand what God has done. And we must appreciate that God has done for us a favor by saving us. And we need to understand that we are not doing him a favor by serving him. Hello. Hallelujah. You know, um, some of us, our attitude suggests that we are doing God a favor. Yeah? Hallelujah. If you don't come to church, God's church will crash. Hmm. Amen. I, I have made an observation in the body of Christ, and I want to share it with us today. And that observation is many of us do not love God. Uh, um, worship leader, that second to last song you sang, I love it. Um, you know, uh, I'm thinking maybe if you have a few minutes, you will sing it again before we leave. Many of us do not love God. In a narrow vision, what we really want to do is get to heaven. So basically, a lot of people who call themselves Christians are controlled by fear. Now, we should not operate in fear. We need to operate in awe. There's a difference between fear and awe. Awe is filled with respect and regard and acceptance. Fear is duty-bound because of chains. And it is true that some people have in their ancestry the understanding of the slave master with the whip, but our master does not carry that kind of abuse. Are you there? Now, how can I say that we do not love God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. 
I like to use the scripture for whenever I have something to say. So let's go and see what Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to 18 says. Ye shall know them by their... And then Jesus, it's Jesus who say that, right? It's in red. In my Bible, I don't know what color it is in yours. But <laughs> Jesus says, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth what? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Hallelujah. So, so Amos, a prophet, did not get a major, in the Bible, did not get major personal revelations from God. Amos' prophetic revelation came from interpreting God's word by reading the scripture. Are you there? And looking at how people act and making a conclusion. So when he makes his declaration that God will do this and God will do that, it is not based on a, 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 a rhema word. It is based on a, a logos word because he read the word, saw what the word says, and then looked at the people around him and said, wait a minute. I didn't see that in the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. We shall know them by there. So I see in the church of Jesus Christ a lack of commitment. Some of us are more devoted to our workspace and our work, our job for a dollar than working for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Pastor, we go down the road, you know. You hear what the Bible says? If a man don't work, he should not what? <laughs> Hallelujah. And that is in the Bible. Anybody there? Hallelujah. What does Jesus say? You cannot love God and? Hallelujah. The love of money is evil. Amen. Come on. You're doing good. Don't, don't worry. I like it. It's not, the, it's not money that is, um, is, is, you know, is evil. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. So good. Uh, so working is not being criticize here yeah. but what efforts you make for the master of this world you need to make a similar effort for the master of this universe who is Jehovah hallelujah I, I was listening to a, a, a preacher this morning and he was talking about that he was saying you know um, the priest um, came into this understanding where they would take tainted um, animals and offer it on the altar of God when they knew that they should only offer perfect sacrifice because when God is concerned God do not understand I do amen hallelujah I know you need to work for the dollar so I don't have a problem hallelujah but you see you're not serving Mario Lane amen? well I hope not so why can I say we do not love God? Lack of devotion. No time to pray and fast. But plenty of time to gossip. Hallelujah. And brethren, I want to repeat it again. I have started to say it. I will say it again. Trust is necessary in the house of God. Stop having so much concerns that it goes to more than one person. If you have uh, concerns that is so strong that you have to tell more than one person, it is gossip. You cannot control. Uh, some of the things people will call and say to me, it cannot become public. Because if it becomes public, a, a life could be destroyed. Hello? So, so if you like to know about other people's business, then something is wrong. Hallelujah. See, a lack of devotion, no time 
to pray and fast. You know, why must I tell you when to pray and fast? I find that strange. Hallelujah. If I have to tell you when to pray and fast, I am your Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the Bible didn't say pray and fast when a prayer and fast is called. It says when you pray. And it says what? When you fast with no conditions. A lack of enthusiasm. I, I love that song again because uh, and, and some of our responses, I was watching the responses this morning in our worship and I was saying praise God. Like people know I was going to preach this so they really responded a little bit. Come on. This is a Pentecostal church. Hello. We are Pentecostal people. I mean, you don't have to roll on the ground, right? You don't have to knock down the bench and we have to replace benches all the time. But I can't understand people in the presence of the Lord. So, you know, it's like if I put a gun to your head and if you don't come to church today, I'll kill you. And you come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. Uh, If we only worship, um, uh, if you uh, will only worship or come into the house of God because the music is right or because you like the pastor, your worship cannot be correct. I, I, you would have heard me talk about the woman with the shoes and her son trying to control her enthusiasm in the house of God. Anyone? Hallelujah. But you see, I, you see, uh, people find that I too, I just, uh, I too uh, uh, emotional, I, I just dance, I just shout, I just wave, man. But brother and sister, if you know where I come from, you know, uh, Brother Ralph, a teacher who I consider my friend, a young man, going by house and eat barbecue chicken because I don't know about barbecue chicken, I couldn't afford it. He said, Mario, I, um, I know you for so long, but I know nothing about you. Tell me something about yourself. So the man invited me in the house. He gave me a barbecue chicken. I think he really want he interested. So I started to talk. He said, stop, stop. Nah, that can't be true. And that's the last time I went by him. Hallelujah. Thank God I started to walk. I could make and buy my own barbecue chicken. Praise the name of the Lord. You know? So, so when I come into the house of God, <laughs> forgive me. Hallelujah. I used to sit down in the middle of the congregation and say, I'm out too big. So I come right up in front. Hallelujah. And in those days, it had a little more space to the front. Amen. So I, the only person I could spit on is the preacher. But my spit can't reach so far. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Because when I come into the house of God, I, I not, I'm not concerned if the worship leader could sing if the musician know how to keep a key, that is not my concern. Hallelujah. When I come into the house of God, I come to meet with him who my heart desire. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I, I said some time ago, I don't go public cricket because I just get on bad in cricket. Right? And it has cameras now. So you don't want to see me, uh, you know, um, Shouting out the, the umpire because I think he thief. Amen. Now, that exuberance for cricket cannot be superior to my exuberance for the goodness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on now. You have not done God a favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't come here, pompous. Not here, but here talking about THC, but the church of God. Don't come pompous and, and, and play that you something. No, 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 no. If it wasn't for Jesus, I don't know where in the world I would have been. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything about my life they should make me a, 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 a destructive force in our society. Hallelujah. But I thank God. 
took me from the miry clay. Hallelujah. And put me on a rock to stay. Hallelujah. He take this terrible individual and wash him and clean him. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I'm forever grateful to you. I'm forever grateful for the cross. Hallelujah. Because you came to save, seek and save Mario. You don't hear, if you listen to me, I do sing the law sinner. I just put my name there <laughs> all the time because hallelujah, he has done good things for me. So when I come into the house of God, hallelujah, glory be to the name of God. It is to praise God. Hallelujah. Let me lose my voice in, in, in church. Instead of lose it, call in with the wife. Amen. Amen. Come on. Now. When you come to church, dance, shout, sing. Please note the excuses we use for our casual approach to God will find no merit at the judgment seat of Christ. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to do a little reading in the next few minutes. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Or is it 2 Corinthians? You know, as always, if... Um, Mix up first and second Corinthians. Let me check first and make sure it's uh, right. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, he stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by in the virgin. If they have no secret, eh? um, the modern system of, of um, using your phone when it's shut off to, to spy on you. Hello? And to backtrack on your Facebook and your uh, um, statement that you made in all of the uh, TikTok and wherever to, to find out your heart's desire. That is old technology. The light of God's sun shines in every darkness. There's no darkness in God. So there is no secret. Hello? So it will be proved by fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If any man works abide, verse 14, which he had built upon, he shall receive a reward. If any man works shall be burnt, he shall suffer. But he himself shall be saved, yet as so as by fire. Turn with me to Luke chapter 17. Now Paul is talking about what is coming up at a later stage for all of us. Are you there? Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know Jesus is in this house? But there's two parts to that, right? He's here to bless, but he's also keeping record. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I tell people, don't defend the truth. Don't ever try to defend the truth. You don't have to defend the truth. The truth, the fruit, the truth will always defend itself. Luke 17, verse 11 to 18. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Gal Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, shoot thyself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There was not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, some of us will be surprised when we get to heaven, you know, brother. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Because somebody we disregard and we thought nothing of 
will have greater glory in heaven than we have. Because Jesus is taking note. Hello, Jesus is taking note. When you come into the house of God, Jesus is watching you. Because you shall know them by their Hallelujah. I like to tell people, if you can't sleep, read your Bible. Amen. If you're having difficulty with insomnia, start to pray. Because you see, the flesh yeah, don't want you to communicate with God. But you cannot be so tired that you can't come into the house of God and give him praise. Oh, help us, Jesus. Because Jesus watching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, uh, the, the, the Corinthians passage say, you know, your works is going to be made be destroyed, but don't worry. Hallelujah. Uh, you go get through, but that is not how you serve somebody that you love. I'm watching this, I don't know if they're pretending or what, but this advertisement where this man and his wife talking and how she come and join him for exercise and things like that. And the man started to cry. I say, what kind of stupidness is that? The man really loved this woman. Amen. That is good. Brethren, that is good. Hallelujah. Because I mean, we have to, let's be emotional in our love, but we should also be emotional in our love for our God. Eh? Let's go to verse chapter 7. Let's go to chapter 7. Just in case we think that's a one-time thing. Chapter 7, verse 36. It's a long reading. We're not going to read all of it. But I like verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner. Uh, hallelujah. I changed that and put Maria's name in it, but hallelujah. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat at the Pharisee's house, bought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Hallelujah. Brethren, don't let people determine your exuberance before God because the, the religious will say, Hi, ah, she's a sinner. Now, when the Pharisee, which was bidden, saw it, he said, speak within himself, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that is touching him, for she's a sinner. Hallelujah. Verse 44. Verse 43. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom... He forgave much because Jesus asked him a question. He said, have two debtors. One owe 100 pence and one worth 500 pence and one worth 50. Hallelujah. When they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them. Tell me, which of them will love him most? And the suggestion is, hallelujah, when you don't love Jesus, it's because you don't think he's done plenty for you. You think you have a right to be in the house of God and worship him. You think it's because, you know, I ain't as bad as she. I, I don't be like he. Hello. Hello. So we come into the house of God and we, uh, and we proud like the Pharisee. I just pray and fast twice a week. Hmm. Hallelujah. Verse 44. Uh, uh, he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, See thou this woman, I entered into thine house, thou givest me no water for my feet, which was an act of honor, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou givest me no kiss, which was a, an act of respect, but this woman since the time I came in had not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with oil. Therefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. By their fruits. Hallelujah. If, you're, if you are unable to see past your struggle, it means you have a heart problem and it's not a bad heart. You think that will go boop boop. 
<laughs> it's a bad heart, the thing that is the spirit. Now, we have been dealing with a new kingdom, new walk, right? Are you there? Hallelujah. We need to embrace our kingdom. You see, I feel that we are missing a major mark. We are looking at the leeches and the onions when we had in slavery and we are desiring it. Hallelujah. Not recognizing that, hallelujah, coming out of Egypt is the greatest thing that has ever happened to you. Hallelujah. Amen. We want people to inspire us to worship God. What? <laughs> Brother, please forgive me. I don't need nobody to inspire me to worship my Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to them. Uh, uh, we, I was at a, in a particular place recently that has the history of being a leading force in the church of Jesus Christ 200 years ago. When I went into that place, only one pack of old people 60 years and over. I'm not talking about kids here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because they have allowed liturgy and structure. Because they have a little education, have a little money. You don't want the mascara to run. Hallelujah. You know, we, we, we are Pentecostal people. And you know, we don't believe in healing because, um, and so we say it was for a long time. We are in the most glorious kingdom on earth. Embrace your kingdom. Serve God with gladness. Now, I, I want to talk about that a little bit, right? Um, gladness is not joy. Joy is of the Holy Ghost. It is only Holy Ghost that give you joy. So you could be poor and you're, you're hungry, your belly hungry and you had joy. You could be sick and racked with pain and have joy. Gladness, on the other hand, is impacted by circumstances. So you get some bad news this morning when you're about to come into the house of God and you can't, your, your spirit fall, right? You say you feel sad, you know, your gladness is impacted by circumstances. But you see, gladness should also be impacted by knowledge. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, what? He didn't say I had joy. He said I was glad because something impacted his understanding. Are you understanding me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that you can change your circumstances. You can, your circumstances may not change, but you can be glad. Glad. 
gladness is impacted by circumstances. Are you aware of what is presently occupying the attention of the world today? Anybody? Apart from COVID. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Do you read Daniel and Revelations? Or are you afraid to read Revelation? Because you know you have a curse in Revelation. Some people don't want to read Revelation. Come on now, read the Revelation, brothers and sisters. Come on now. Amen. Are you excited? While it has pain, which will affect us. It can't start to affect us yet, but it will. Uh, Ukraine is one of the most strategically important countries in the earth where uh, uh, food is concerned. It's interesting. So it will impact us. While there will be pain, it represents the fulfilling of scriptures before our eyes. And if there is another reason why we should embrace our kingdom is that. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to embrace our kingdom. Because we are in the superior kingdom. Hallelujah. We are in the superior kingdom, brethren. Are you there? Uh, we are in the superior kingdom. Greater is he that is what? Than he that is what? And our attitude needs to show that. Your attitude and your action will declare if you're a good fruit or not. Let me close by saying, as true ambassadors, therefore, we need to know our kingdom's principles. Hallelujah. It is great that we live among frail human beings. Subject to feelings and failures. Because it gives a proper and a good opportunity for us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. To understand the principles. Hallelujah. Lie not. The scriptures we read at the beginning. Lie not to one another. Oh, Jesus, help us. A good ambassador represents his kingdom's position well. So the question is, are you praying? Are you giving? Are you serving with joy? As I said, gladness on the other side. Is the world, your world, seeing your good works and glorifying your Father which is in heaven? Hello? Are you benevolent like your Father? I just want to read this because I like it so much. Please forgive me. Matthew chapter, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Ye have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Hello? Love your enemy, if you have any. Love your enemy. <laughs> In case you have an enemy, love your enemy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless them that cost you. And, and let me give a little theology here. If there had nobody in this house who could curse me, or in any house, or in any place, because I am a son of God. No weapon formed against me shall, and every tongue that rises against me shall what? That is not Mario Lane alone, I for all of us. So all they could do is cuss. Hello. <laughs> Glory be to the God. Come on now. Hallelujah. You may not like me, but it's all right. I don't care. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that... Now, the other one talks about love your enemies, right? Because you might have one. But then you know there are some people. 
for whatever reason, don't like it, the blood, lack of knowledge, maybe, they, because some of them call themselves Christian, right? They say, my blood don't take shit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despisefully use you. How are you praying for them? Father, kill them in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah, you know we need to be tempted, right? But you know your carcass, your brother, right? I hope you understand. Brethren, we need to put aside that thing where we, we have a problem with somebody in the house of God. And when something goes wrong with them, we say, it's good for she. That ain't in the Bible. It may be human, <laughs> but it ain't in the Bible. Pray for them that despise for you and persecute you. Why? Verse 45, I love it. That you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. Why? Because he does bless everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to be an ambassador. You have to what? Represent your kingdom well. Hallelujah. I am convinced this revelation the Lord has given me for over 25 years. And I believe it. We want to do all kind of simidimi to get people into the house of God. I want to let you know, if we live right among ourselves, the power of God is going to draw people into the house of God. Hallelujah. I have no enemy. If I mash your corn and you think it's because I don't like you, sorry. Hallelujah. I, I didn't expect you to have corn. So that's why I mash your, your, your corn. Hallelujah. But I have no enemy. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Because we are all, once you're saved. Amen. So people just get a little tired with me. They want to bring Bill for me who is Christian. Yeah, when I go to my mechanic, he's a believer. He wants to show me what he do. I say, what are you showing me that for? I don't want to know that. If you're saved, you have to be correct in your attitude. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Of course, hallelujah, people say, you know, but people will take advantage of you because you shall know them by their fruit. And you don't live for others, right? Live for God for yourself and let God use you. Could we give God a praise in the house of the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I am here, Master Petrol, giving me praise and giving God praise. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. For you are worthy of all praise. Like David, we pause and say, what is man that thou remembers him or the son of man? That you've made him a little lower than yourself and crowned him with glory and honor. It amazes us to recognize that sovereign Lord lives in our hearts. Holy Ghost, that you are there to lead us into truth. To raise up a people unto your kingdom. I pray today that all of us, those online and those in the house, hallelujah, glory be to God, that we will, oh God, represent you well. In the name of the Lord, we will practice your word. We will live according to the dictates of your word. We will not allow, oh God, the natural temptations of human experience Oh God, to blind our eyes, we will say like David, is there not a cause? Hallelujah. And we declare, I am a son of God. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Have your way in the midst of each and every one of us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.